like going for it here. I'm definitely doing that with pretty much all my King 10s. Little golden rule I'm having there for super fancy random bluffs is just doing it with suited hands to not get frequencies totally out of control. Uh, Ace King mainly fast playing, sometimes just flatting. Uh, this time I feel like four batting. Again, I don't know that guy. I block King Queen suited, I block Ace Queen suited. So we have two okay. Uh, we have we find reasons to bet. Just thinking about the sizing now. I think small is fine. He should have something like seven, eight, five, six, four, five suited. Maybe something like that. Something like Jack's tens does not really have equity uh, going against my value hands. So it's like no reason to like to go big now. Uh, we can just start small and then start hammering on him. Now having hearts would obviously be better, but I think that's still fine. To go like direction linear sizing now. I mean, he has all pocket queens, he has some aces, but uh, yeah. Uh, bottom right is interesting on the turn flush card with my set. Uh, definitely this is the only sizing I'm using. And this is a freaking good river card. Hmm. Let's think about sizings. I think I still want to value bet something like aces and ace king with a spade. So I need that 75% sizing and villain has enough reasons to value raise a good flush here. Right? He could easily slow play that on the turn. So against a good flush, I want to make sure I get all the money in the middle. So if he would not raise here, I'm just I could just jam, for example. But he should do that, so I definitely prefer my normal sizing, get the maximum out of a king maybe, while still having um, the chance to stack off against a, a strong flush. And he had a medium flush, yeah, against that. I'm losing a little value compared to maybe over batting slightly or whatever. Yeah, up here I think I called 4 bet. I didn't see that that guy is just a recreation with 24 bigs. Uh, but yeah, jacks still just have to go in. Nope. Not this time. Bottom right, it's very close already to float on the flop. Um, the king hits him very, very well, and he should actually see bet on the turn with very, very, very high frequency. He should use quite some small sizings. Um, now I can step a little, um, and I will sometimes want to do that with that hand, actually. So him checking here should mean something like 7x, pocket 8s, pocket 9s, like some ace x that mainly are stronger than mine. Makes sense to use that for a stab, still having three outs against the king or against anything pretty much. But his slow plays <clears throat> is three off. Uh, very, very close defend here. Let's, let's go with it. Hit a top pair, that's nice. Um, eight for three uh, with my nine ten. It's a board I should check very high frequency, but I think I can see some check raises going on here. Um, calling my ace three. No more time bank, just rejoining this one. Uh, 9, 10 of diamonds checking again to go for the fancy check race can make sense. Uh, and just betting against uh, anything that has not an ace and then giving up river can make sense as well. Bottom right, I'll just go a little fancy. He checks back a board he could easily range bet on. Uh, he never has it. I have king 10 off suit. I have 10, 8 suited. I can sometimes just go direction all in if I want to. And uh, up here with that seven, I have to catch. He has so many one, one diamond hands. And uh, yeah, okay, he has a king. <laughs> Bottom left on that kind of brick board, uh, mainly you see betting half pot. On that queen, that's interesting. I can start building a checking range. I can keep going with a small sizing. On that river, I said I'm all in pretty much. He has all kinds of nine tens, eight nines, jack eight, jack 10. Uh, he should call sometimes, fold mainly, um, and then we go from there. Randomize, uh, randomizer by heart, just like going for it here. I'm definitely doing that with pretty much all my King 10s. Little golden rule I'm having there for super fancy random bluffs is um, just doing it with suited hands to not get frequencies totally out of control. King, I expect a call now, actually, to be honest. Uh, against me, if he knows my name. Call, always last second call. It's like, they always have exactly this hand. I like to be value heavy in that spot, uh, but yeah, I, I couldn't help myself this time. Pocket five spot and right for that sizing against that stack death. I think he just has it and I, oh, I can't help myself. It's like not really a set value, but like maybe he just checks down ace king sometimes. I just need to 
not float too much there. I just thinking he has it. I need some extra EV uh, added to my like to when I hit a set. Queens opening that. Um, this is interesting. Someone checking back. Jack eight seven. I think that ten connects too well with him to go fancy crazy. Now I should definitely have a block bet to just win against his ace highs that he will mainly fold. I'm not trying to represent a nine here only. Nice. Pocket queens early position versus the small bind, uh, just a flat and uh, go from there. Four betting would be just a, yeah, sometimes you can do it, but it's it's more or less an overplay. And yeah, going from here now, um, I beat jacks. I block king queen of hearts. That's about it. He has all ace kings, he has all aces, he has all tens, he has all kinds of that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's just one call and then mainly fold on lots of runouts. Interesting top right uh, to face that big c bet on that board. I think it doesn't make any sense on that board, so it means something. I put him on ace jack, king jack, pocket queens. So having queen jack, I mean, I'm not going anywhere for now, but yeah, this is actually after facing a big bet, getting that card that he should never have uh, is a very, very, it's, it's almost a range donk in spots like that. And yeah, thank you for making it bottom left very, very easy for me. I have queen jack suited, I have all ace king offsuits that I'm not three betting, so uh, queens are pretty easy fold here. And that queen jack, I think I prefer to decide the sizing myself, uh, or I. On that seven, I prefer the bet. It's like now very very tough that 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 spot in the top right. On the one hand, I try to play poker that somewhat makes sense. On the other hand, I put him on like king jack on the flop and kings and queens just because of the big sizing. So it's like yeah, if I put him on that, I should just check the turn and and check fold to a big bet. Um, it's like that in between, like being sure, being not sure about. Uh, reads what it means but I know for sure that this is always the value hand here uh, that started like that. Uh, finding the bluff here that did that in the first place is just very very tough. Maybe I could have saved a little more if my read is, is more clear there. It's more of the first impression that I tried to follow up with. And yeah, whatever. Ace Jack suited, uh, I iso limper against that 3 bet. This is definitely, this is more like a cold 4 bet anyway. Uh, so it, it's not like the fist pump snap call easy, um, but ace jack suited, obviously we are not folding. And um, yeah, let's go from there, flopping a flush draw, pretty nice. That small sizing that we mainly expect here. I think some raising can make sense, uh, just to attack something like pocket tens, uh, ace, queen. Yeah, sometimes raising with a small sizing can make sense. Mainly I'm just calling. Jack obviously is good, now beating ace queen, still trying to not run into kings, aces, whatever. Uh, so the small sizing, now that's the question, I have an ace jack, I could try to get value from like pocket tens, something like that. I easily find the bluffs, it's the question whether I want to open up the block bet, but I think since I want to check my ace 10 and ace queen of clubs that I'm mainly giving up or even having showdown value. I take this one and this is my check call. I don't expect him to have too many king x. Some pocket kings maybe. Um, pocket queens that do not find a river value bet. He definitely missed value there. Uh, but you see like the hands I was talking about, this was kind of the spot. A limper, it's like first interest in the pot. I iso that is already stronger than just me open raising and then him raising against that. It's it's closer to a cold for bad pot, just with a different stack to pot ratio. Uh, queen check suited. I guess mainly a squeeze uh, with that fl flat right there. Can be anything. Folding out something like king queen offsuit would be good. Facing a jam. Eh, just tells me he has freaking ace king. I lose open raise top left against that one with a green mark. Be fine. Uh, See, putting half pot on that board. Bigger sizing is fine. The small size is not too nice, and then you can still go for it. So I go for some kind of trade-off. King definitely very good card. Uh, I use a kind of mergey sizing since I still want to value bet something like Ace Jack, Queen Jack, and all the King X. So not polarizing too much there. Uh, using not an overbet. King four suited. Uh, weaker guy on the button. Non full stack in the cutoff. Good player in the in the big blind though. Um, it's like it's close, but I mean we see what's happening here. So uh, let's see flop. Damn it! I, I felt it like a, for a second like flopping two pair, but think against half pot like min three bet half pot. 
The risk is that I'm already more or less drawing dead. Against aces, against using the big size, he doesn't have like queens, jacks. I've never seen people play it like that. I think I'm actually just going with the tight fold. And against someone checking down ace king 9 9 jack, I think I'm, I'm trying. I would have preferred to see a low card on the river, just like he has jacks. It's more tempting with it just because it's some random blocker, even though that doesn't matter to just randomly call with queens and tens if you play it that way. Uh, his main hands should be king x, so um, yeah, that's okay. He can just raise all kinds of shit. Probably better to not bluff that spot too often. 